Hello students, I am Shachi Tandon from Track Chemistry. Today I am here with the class 10th topic. The name of the topic is Carbon and its Compounds Part 1. Students, this topic is very interesting, important and a scoring topic. So if you have a thorough concepts of this topic, you may secure your full marks from this topic. Uh, students in this topic, we will study about covalent compounds. Then we will compare the properties of covalent compounds and ionic compounds. After that, we will study the structure of some uh, compounds. So before starting, I just want to remind you to subscribe my channel for getting information about further uploads. Press the like button if you like this video and share the video with your friends. So now see what we will study today. So students, this is the chapter 4th of your NCIT textbook. So now we will study today. First of all, we will see the general introduction. After that, we will study about the bonding in carbon. What is covalent bond? After that, we will study what are covalent compounds. Then we will compare the properties of covalent compounds and ionic compounds. After that, I'll tell you a trick to write the electron dot structure of covalent compounds so that easily without any mistake, you can write the structure of covalent compounds. Then we will study some simple molecules formed by sharing of electrons. And finally, we will study the characteristics of covalent compounds. So now let's start today's session. Children, uh, if you see around you, you will find many items. And some examples I would like to mention here like a foot, clothes, medicine, books, or many other things. And if you look at these things internally, you will find that all these things are made up of carbon means most of the things which you are using, like you are using uh, the table, you are using the pen, uh, the clothes you are wearing, the food you are eating, each and everything is made up of carbon. Then uh, one more point I would like to mention here, even our living structures are carbon based. So you can see that we are fully surrounded by carbon, but we are not aware of this fact that we are fully surrounded by carbon. Then one more point, very interesting point is that the amount of carbon present in the earth crust and atmosphere is very, very less. For example, the earth crust has only 0.02% carbon in the form of minerals. What are these minerals? These minerals are carbonates, hydrogen carbonates, coal, petroleum. So this is the percentage of carbon compounds which are present in the earth crust. Then we will see what about atmosphere. Children, atmosphere has only 0.03% of carbon dioxide. So just now we have seen two contradictory things. We saw that in our daily life we are fully surrounded by carbon and its compounds. But if we look in the earth crust and atmosphere, we will see that the amount of carbon present there is very, very small. So in spite of this small amount of carbon available in nature, the importance of carbon is immense. So it is extremely important for us. This fact we will study in this chapter. So in this chapter, we will study about the properties of carbons, which make carbon very, very important for us. So first of all, children, we will study the bonding in carbon and the covalent bond. So before starting covalent compounds, students, first I would like to mention about ionic compounds, which you have studied in your previous chapter. You all know that ionic compounds have high melting and boiling points. And the second thing is that they conduct electricity, either in solution on in the molten state. So these are the two points about ionic compounds. You are very well familiar. The first point is that they have very high melting and boiling points. And the second fact is that 
they conduct electricity either in the solution or in the molten state so now what decides the properties of any compound always remember students one point that the nature of bonding decides the, the nature of bonding explains the properties of the compounds so the same is applicable here for ionic compounds so now we will go in detail uh, and uh, we will compare the properties of ionic compounds with carbon compounds students most of the carbon compounds they are poor conductors of electricity and they have low melting and boiling points as compared to ionic compounds so uh, these two points we have seen that ionic compounds have very high melting and boiling points whereas carbon compounds have less melting and boiling points similarly we have seen that ionic compounds they are good conductors of electricity either in the molten state or in the solution form whereas covalent compounds they are poor conductors of electricity so as i discussed earlier what decides these properties students nature of bonding decides the properties of the compounds so what decides the properties of the compounds nature of bonding decides the property of compounds so this point you have to keep in your mind so now we will start our study from this uh, view so we will see the nature of bonding in ionic compound as well as in covalent compound so children just now we have seen that covalent compounds have low melting and boiling point so if they have low melting and boiling points it means the forces of attraction between the molecules of a covalent compound are not very strong so if the forces of attra attraction between the molecules of a covalent compound are not very strong definitely their melting and boiling points will be low and one more point we have mentioned that uh, these compounds are largely non conductors of electricity so if they are large con uh, uh, largely these compounds if they are non conductors of electricity it indicates that uh, these compounds do not give any ions because uh, students one point i would like to mention here the conduction of electricity is caused because of the two reasons first point is the due to the presence of free electrons so this reason you will find in case of metals so metals conduct electricity because they have free electrons and the second reason is due to the presence of ions free ions so this is responsible for conduction free ions are responsible for conduction in case of ionic compounds so now easily we can conclude that as ionic compounds they conduct electricity either in the molten state or in the uh, aqueous solution so we can conclude that they provide ions they have free ions to move but in the case of covalent compounds as most of them are non conductors of electricity they don't have ions to move they don't provide any ions so i hope these points are clear to you now with the help of this table i would like to show you uh, melting and boiling points of some of the carbon compounds the first compound is acetic acid you can see its melting point is very low it's given here it is 290 kelvin and its boiling point is also 391 kelvin then chloroform again it is having a low melting point 209 kelvin and a boiling point of 334 kelvin the next compound is ethanol its melting point is 156 kelvin and boiling point is 351 kelvin then the next compound is methane methane its melting point is 90 and boiling point is 111 kelvin so now we can get an idea that melting and boiling points of covalent compounds are lower than the melting and boiling points of ionic compounds now children we will see the bonding in carbon so the atomic number of carbon is 6 so atomic number of carbon is 6 i'm just writing here atomic number of carbon is 6 means 
atomic number is represented by the symbol Z. So Z for carbon is 6. If Z for carbon is 6 means it has 6 proton because atomic number is always equal to number of protons and since the atom is neutral so it will be equal to number of electrons. So atomic number of carbon is 6. It has 6 protons and 6 electrons. Now children you might be knowing from your previous studies that an element, any element react in order to become stable like noble gases. So in order to be attain the electronic configuration of nearest noble gas, an element may lose electron, may gain electron or may share electrons. So we will consider the case of carbon here. In the case of carbon, as it has four electrons in its outermost shell, so it needs four more electrons to attain the noble gas configuration of the nearest inert gas. So if it gain or loses electrons to become stable, what will be the resultant structure we will see? So first we will consider if it gain four electrons to um, form C4 minus anion. So uh, children, as I have discussed just now, atomic number of carbon is 6. Its electronic configuration is 2 comma 4. So if it gains 4 more electrons, so what will be its electronic configuration? Its electronic configuration will become 8 electron in its, in its second shell, 8 electron in its L shell, just like neon. So now it will convert into C4 minus anion. So if carbon gains 4 more electrons, so C4 minus anion has 6 protons because there is no change in protons but it will have 10 electrons. So we, we can see here after gaining 4 electrons, this change will take place. C4 minus anion will have 6 protons and 10 electrons. So it will be very difficult for the nucleus. It will be very difficult for the nucleus with 6 protons. We can see here the nucleus has 6 protons. To hold on 10 electrons, that is 4 extra electrons. So that will be a very difficult situation. So the nucleus with 6 protons to hold on 10 electrons that is the four extra electrons, it will be a very difficult task. So this possibility of gaining four electrons is not possibility because it's not a not an easy task. It's a very, very difficult thing. Uh, so now we will discuss the second possibility. If it loses four electrons, so as we know that carbon's atomic number, again I'm writing here, it is 6C, electronic configuration is 2,4. So now children see if it loses 4 electrons. If it loses 4 electrons means it will convert into C4 plus cation. So what will be the situation? Now still it has 6 protons. But how many electrons? It will have electrons only 2. So now we can see that this is again not an easy situation if carbon loses four electrons. So it requires a lot of energy to remove four electrons because easily electrons can't be removed. So removal of four electrons require a lot of energy and leaving behind a carbon cation, leaving behind a carbon cation which has six protons and just two electrons. So we can see that this possibility is uh, also not possible. It is ruled out. So now how carbon will overcome this problem? We have seen that the loss and gain of electrons by carbon is not an easy task. So how carbon overcomes this problem? Carbon overcomes this problem by sharing its valence electron either with other atoms of carbon or with atoms of other elements. So this is the possibility left. So carbon completes its octet by sharing its valence electron either with carbon atoms or with atoms of other elements. And children, remember one point, not just carbon, 
many other elements they form molecules by sharing of electrons in this manner we will study in today's session the examples of such compounds now one more point sharing means what is the meaning of sharing suppose a uh, bond is formed suppose a bond is formed between two atoms so there will be equal contribution from both the atoms suppose one atom is providing one electron another atom will also provide one electron so that shared pair of electron will remain between two atoms so the shared electrons belong to the outermost shells of both the atoms and it leads to both the atoms attaining the noble gas configuration so if both uh, atoms are providing electron pair for sharing so both the atoms will attain the noble gas configuration so i hope this point is clear to you children now we will study some simple molecules formed by sharing of valence electrons so first example we will see hydrogen the simplest example we are going to start the simplest molecule formed is in this manner is that of hydrogen students we know that atomic number of hydrogen is 1 so hence hydrogen has only one electron in its gas shell and how many electrons more it requires to become stable uh, like helium it requires one more electrons to fill the gas shell gas shell means first shell so i hope this point is clear to you as children has as uh, carbon has only one electron it needs one more electron to make its outermost gas gas shell that is first shell complete with two electrons so what will happen the two hydrogen atoms share their electrons to form a molecule of hydrogen what will happen after the sharing of electrons after the sharing of one electron from each hydrogen atom both the hydrogen atoms will attain the electronic configuration of nearest noble gas which is helium we know that helium has two electron in its outermost shell so both uh, the hydrogen atoms during the formation of hydrogen molecule they will acquire they will achieve a stable electronic configuration just like helium so we can depict this formation with the help of the um, dots or cross this is structure is called as lewis dot structure so the formation of hydrogen molecule i am going to show here this i have written i am i am writing one hydrogen atom and this cross represents the valence shell electron of hydrogen we know that hydrogen atom has one valence electron only now this is another hydrogen atom this is another hydrogen atom it has it also has one electron so both the hydrogen atom will provide one electron for sharing and this results in the formation of a bond this bond is called as covalent bond as in this case you can see the sharing of one electron pair is taking place so this results in the formation of a single bond so children i hope this point is clear to you and single bond is represented by a, a single line so single bond i am writing here this is a single bond so i hope this point is clear to you now we will see the next example next example is a chlorine the atomic number of chlorine is 17 so its electronic configuration will be 2,8, 7 so now we can see that it needs one more electron to become stable it needs one more electron to become stable like neon to become a stable like neon because uh, neon has 10 electrons and uh, its electronic configuration is So now we will start the next example, which is chlorine. Ch 
children, the atomic number of chlorine is 17. So Z for chlorine is 17. Its electronic configuration will be 2, 8, 7. So from this electronic configuration, it is clear that chlorine requires one more electron to become stable like argon. So I'm writing here, it needs one more electron it needs one more electron to become stable like argon argon is the nearest noble gas which z is equal to 18 so now, as chlorine needs one more electrons to become stable like argon, its valency will be equal to 1. So valency of chlorine will be equal to 1. So how formation of chlorine molecule can take place? Each atom of chlorine shares one electron with, with another atom of chlorine and it forms a diatomic molecule chlorine. So now we will draw the structure of a chlorine molecule. So I am writing one atom of chlorine with valence electrons only. So as we know that chlorine has seven valence electrons, so I'm writing the seven cross around the chlorine atom. Now I will write another chlorine atom again with the same uh, valence shell configuration. So seven electrons in the outermost shell. I'm writing only the outermost shell electron. So we can see that each chlorine atom is providing one electron for the sharing of one electron for sharing. So this results in the formation of a single bond. So I can write here, I told you that a single bond is formed by the sharing of one pair of electrons and it is represented by means of a single line. So this is a single bond. Now I would like to take another example oxygen. Another example is oxygen. So children, in the case of oxygen, what is happening? First, I would like to write the atomic number of oxygen. So Z for oxygen is 8. Its electronic configuration is 2,6. So we can see here that it needs two more electrons to become stable like neon. So it needs two more electrons to become stable like neon. So each oxygen atom has six valence electron. So during the formation of oxygen molecule, each oxygen atom provides two electrons for sharing. So this results in the formation of a double bond. After that, the octet of both of the oxygen atoms is completed and both of the oxygen atoms will acquire the configuration of the nearest noble gas, which is neon. So I am just writing here the formation of photo molecule oxygen with six valence electrons. So I am writing here six valence electrons. This is another oxygen atom, this again with six valence electrons. So we can see here that both the oxygen atoms have provided two two electron pairs for the bonding, for the formation of a covalent bond. So as two electron pairs are shared here, so there will be a formation of double bond between two oxygen atoms, which is represented by two horizontal lines. So I'm just writing here, it is a uh, double bond. So I'm just writing here, one which is formed here, this is a double bond. Double bond. This is double.
Now, I would like to take another example as a water molecule. Well, now we can easily depict the formation of water molecule. Children, before writing the formation of uh, water molecule, we will see the electronic configuration of hydrogen and oxygen. So, atomic number of hydrogen is 1. It has only one electron in its valence shell. Oxygen we have discussed. Atomic number of oxygen is 8. Its electronic configuration is 2,6. So now if we look at these electronic configuration, easily we will get an answer. In order to become stable, hydrogen needs one more electron and the oxygen needs two more electrons. So how is it possible? In the case of water molecule, the formation can be shown like this. So as oxygen has six valence electrons, so I am writing the structure of oxygen first. Lewis structure I'll write first. So this is the oxygen with six electrons. Now I will write hydrogen. Hydrogen has one electron. Similarly, I'm writing one more hydrogen here. This also has one electron. So now I think you might be getting the answer. We can show the formation of water molecule, how it is taking place. Here you can see these are the eight electrons of oxygen. So octet of oxygen is completed. Now what about helium? No, now what about hydrogen? In the case of hydrogen, you can see that hydrogen has two electrons in its outermost shell. So duplet of hydrogen is also completed here. So you can see here, this is the formation of water molecule. And we can show the formation of water molecule uh, like this. This single bond represent between oxygen and uh, hydrogen. One pair of electron is shared. Similarly, this another single bond will also show that in the formation of water molecule, formation of a single bond is take, has taken place between oxygen and hydrogen. So I hope this point is clear to you. So. Here we can show the structure of water molecule O. As we have seen, it has six electrons. So six crosses. Then oxygen we have written here. Then we will write hydrogen. So the hydrogen also has one electron. One more hydrogen this side. So now we can show the formation of bond, how the sharing takes place and how the octet of all the concerned atoms is completed. So you can count that oxygen completes its octet. What about hydrogen? Both the hydrogen completes their duplet. So we can see that during the formation of water molecule, there is a sharing of one pair of electrons between oxygen and each hydrogen atom. Therefore, it results in the formation of a single bond between oxygen, hydrogen, between oxygen and both the hydrogen atoms. So this water molecules can be shown here like this. So this is the structure of water molecule. Now, we will consider our next example. Next example is nitrogen. Nitrogen has the atomic number 7. So Z is equal to 7 for nitrogen. Its electronic configuration will be 2,5. So when its electronic configuration is 2,5, we can see that it needs 3 more electrons. to become a stable like, like neon. So as it needs three more electrons to become a stable like neon, its combining capacity will be three. So now these points are clear to us. So in order to attain an octet, as each nitrogen atom <laughs> requires three electrons, so during the formation of nitrogen molecule, each nitrogen atom contributes three electrons. 
resulting in the formation of a triple bond between two atoms. So I'll show the formation of nitrogen molecule here. Nitrogen atom with five valence electrons. So I'm writing here like this. This is another nitrogen atom with five valence electrons. Now you can see that each nitrogen atom is providing three electrons pairs for bonding. Similarly, this nitrogen atom will also provide three electron pair for bonding. So this will result in the development of a triple bond between nitrogen and nitrogen. So I hope this point is also clear to you. Now we will see the formation of ammonia molecule. Children, the formula of ammonia molecule is NH3. So again, we will write the electronic configuration of nitrogen whose atomic number is 7. So electronic configuration of nitrogen is 2,5 and hydrogen we know that its atomic number is only 1. So its electronic configuration is 1 only. So how the formation of ammonia molecule can take place? Children, we will write 5 valence electrons of nitrogen atom. So these two, these are the two electrons in the form of cross I will write here. This is 1, 1. So now what will happen? Hydrogen with one electron. Three hydrogens with one electron each will form a bond. How the formation of bond will take place? We can show here. This is the octet. Of, here you can see that octet of nitrogen is completed. Now what about hydrogens? This hydrogen acquires two electrons in its valence shell means that for this hydrogen duplet is completed. Similarly for this hydrogen also duplet is completed and for this hydrogen also duplet is completed. So we can see that during the formation of ammonia three nitrogen hydrogen single bond formation has taken place. So this is the structure of formation of ammonia. So the one more point I would like to mention here, the electron pair which are involved in bonding are called as bond pair. The electron pairs which are involved in bonding are called as bond pair. And the electron pair which are not involved in bonding, they are called as lone pair or unshared pair. And bond pair of electrons are also called as shared pair of electrons. Now, next we will see the structure of methane molecule. Children, methane. Methane is a compound of carbon and it is widely used as a fuel and it is a major component of biogas. Biogas and compressed natural gas. So, uh, we are starting the first hydrocarbon, the simplest hydrocarbon which is methane. Methane is a compound of carbon and it is used as a fuel and we have seen that it is a component of biogas and compress natural gas. So it is one of the simplest compound formed by carbon and its formula is CH4. So see a formula of CH a formula of methane is CH4. So CH4 we will see hydrogen has a valency of one and the carbon is tetravalent because it has four valence electrons. So what will happen? In order to achieve the noble gas configuration, carbon shares all these four electrons so carbon shares all these four electrons with the four atoms of hydrogen. How it will show? I am going to show you here. So here I am writing a, uh, the structure of carbon, Lewis structure of carbon with four valence electrons I am showing with the help of four cross. Then four hydrogen atoms each with its electron. They will provide the electron for the formation of bond. So we, you can see here in the case of methane molecule, the octet of carbon is completed. It has eight electrons. Similarly, the duplet of all the four hydrogens have has also been completed. So how we can write this structure? We can write this structure as the single bond edge single bond H, single bond H and single bond H. So this was the structure of methane molecule. 
children now i would like to say the bonds which are formed by the sharing of an electron pair between two atoms are known as covalent bonds so what are covalent bonds the bonds which are formed by sharing of electrons between two atoms are called as covalent bonds just now we have seen that uh, if during the formation of a covalent bond sharing of one pair of electron takes place it is called as a single covalent bond the case you have seen in case of chlorine molecule in the case of hydrogen molecule and if during the formation of a covalent bond two electron pairs are shared the formation of a double bond takes place likewise if three electron pairs are shared a triple bond formation takes place now one more important thing children covalently bonded molecules they have a strong bond within the molecules but intermolecular forces are very strong so like i would like to mention one example here suppose i am taking an example of methane molecule here so we have seen that methane consists of four bonds between four hydrogen atoms so methane has four bonds between four hydrogen atoms so we got the structure of methane here but what we are saying the strong uh, the covalent they bonded compound they have a strong bonds within the molecules but intermolecular forces are weak like we have another carbon atom so we are talking about these bonds are a strong bond but what about these forces which are present between two carbon atoms these forces are weak forces which are present between two carbon atom so this is the reason uh covalent compounds have low melting and boiling points now one more point i would like to mention here we can see that since the electrons are shared between two atoms and no charged particles are formed therefore these compounds they are generally poor conductors of electricity so i hope all these points are very much clear to you children now i have a question for you uh, test yourself so what would be the electron dot structure of carbon dioxide which has the formula co2 so children i hope that you will be able to answer this question um, a little bit hint i will give you first you will write the central atom is carbon and you know what is the atomic number of carbon carbon has six valence electron so its electronic configuration will be 2 comma 4 so i am writing here z for carbon is equal to 6 so if z for carbon is 6 means its electronic configuration will be 2 comma 4 so carbon needs four more electrons to become stable so first i am writing the lewis structure for carbon then i am writing oxygen children you might be knowing that atomic number of oxygen is 8 and its electronic configuration is 6 so we can see that each oxygen atom also requires two more electrons to become stable so i am writing here electrons of the oxygen atom so you can see that both oxygen and carbon are providing uh, two electron pairs for sharing so this side i will write oxygen this side i will write oxygen so you can see here oxygen again oxygen will have its own six uh, electrons so we can show the formation of bond if you look at the carbon molecule carbon atom if you look at the carbon atom you will see that eight electrons of uh, carbon have completed carbon has acquired the stable noble gas configuration then if you look at the oxygen this oxygen also you can see it has become stable like the nearest noble gas this oxygen has also become stable like nearest noble gas so what will uh, be the formula of carbon dioxide how we can write since it is involves the formation of a, a double bond it involves the sharing of two electron uh, pairs so that's why it results in the development of a double bond between carbon and oxygen so this is the structure of carbon dioxide now children one more structure is there uh, you have to write the electron dot structure of a molecule of sulfur 
which is made up of eight atoms of carbon. So what you have to do? You have to draw the electron dot structure of a molecule of sulfur which is made up of eight atoms of carbon. So what we will do here children? We will write eight carbon atoms in the form of a circle. So we have written till here we have five, then six, then seven, then eight. So now you have to write the electron dot structure of a molecule of sulfur which is made up of 8 atoms of sulfur. Children, atomic number of sulfur is 16. So what will be its electronic configuration? 2,8,6. So as each sulfur atom has 6 electrons in its valence shell, how many more it requires to become stable? Yes, it requires 2 more to become stable. So what I am doing here, I am writing the Lewis structure for each carbon atom. So 4, 5, 6 electrons I have written here. Now, I am talking about the another sulfur. Another sulfur again, it will have 6 valence electrons. So, what will happen? So, we have written uh, six electrons of this sulfur with the help of a white colouring so that it will become easy for us to distinguish similarly this carbon atom. This carbon atom again it will provide one electron for formation of a bond. So this one electron I am writing here then six electrons sulfur itself had. So like this the process will be continued. So in the final stage we will get this structure of sulfur and if you see that octet of each of the sulfur atom has completed this I can show you here uh, in few atoms of sulfur children just see here I am talking about this sulfur atom. So you can see that these are the electrons of sulfur 4, 6, 8. Like this you can see if you continue this diagram you can see that uh, octet of each of the sulfur atom has completed and you will get a structure like this. So children I hope all these points are clear to you. You have understood each and every point. So in the last we will see what we have discussed today. We have discussed about the introduction. Uh, we studied bonding in carbon, the covalent bond, what are covalent compounds. Then we compare the properties of covalent compounds and the ionic compounds. After that I told you, I taught you a trick to write the electronic draw the structure of covalent compounds. Then finally in the last we studied some simple molecules formed by sharing of electrons and characteristics of covalent compounds. So children I hope all these points are very clear to you. Uh, in case of any doubt you can post your doubts in the comments bo comment box and uh, in the end I would like to remind you to subscribe my channel for getting further information about the very very important uploads. Press the like button if you like this video and share the video with your friends. Don't forget to watch my next video Carbon and its Compounds Part 2. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.